Hello friends, welcome to the channel. It has been always seen that though people calculate the shear force and bending moment values correctly, they mess up with the shear force and bending moment diagram. They are often in confusion. Ki incline line aega, straight line aega, curve aega, and etc. etc. I am sure that this video will remove all your confusions. So let us begin. Now let us brush up with the basics of types of loading. There are four types. The first one is a simply supported wheel in which the two reactions act at both the ends and one load acts at the center or anywhere in the span of the wheel. The second one is the uniformly distributed load in which the load intensity remains constant throughout the wheel. The third one is the uniformly varying load in which the load intensity varies throughout the wheel. There are two types. The first one in which the load intensity decreases from a certain value to zero and the second one in which the load intensity increases from zero to a certain value. In order to understand the shear force and bending moment diagrams correctly, we just need to memorize the two basic equations. And these basic equations, which I call it as golden equation, are W is equal to dV by dx and V is equal to dM by dx, where W is the load intensity measured in kilonewton per meter, V is the shear force measured in kilonewton and M is the bending moment measured in kilonewton meter. We will be learning more about these equations when we consider the examples. Let us consider an example. In this example, an UDL of load intensity 5 kN per meter is running over a span of 4 meter. The support reactions can be calculated easily by constructing an FBD and using the two basic equations of equilibrium that is summation FY is equal to 0 and moment at any one of these points equal to 0. The support reactions turn out to be 10 kN and 10 kN both. Now, let us come to our main area of interest. We have to construct the shear force diagram for the same. For this, we use our traditional method. Consider a point which is just to the left of A. At this point, as there is no point load acting, so the shear force at a point which is just to the left of A is equal to zero. While the shear force at a point which is just to the right of A is equal to plus 10 kN as a point load of 10 is acting over there. Consider a point which is just to the left of B. The total shear force at this point will be equal to 10 for this reaction minus 20 because of the UDL is equal to minus 10 kN. Also, the shear force at a point which is just to the right of B is equal to 0. Now, let us construct the shear force diagram. The shear force at A is plus 10 kN. While the shear force at B is minus 10 kN. Now, here comes the question. How do we join these two points? There can be an inclined line like this, or a curve like this, or a curve like this. So, how do we figure out which one would be coming? For this, we have to use our golden equation, which says that W is equal to dV by dx. According to this equation, the slope of the shear force diagram will be equal to the load intensity. Now, in this case, as an UDL is running over the total span, the load intensity is constant, which is equal to 5 kN per meter. So, we have to fit a curve whose slope remains constant. Check this out. For the first curve, the initial slope is close to 0 degree and the final slope is close to 90 degree. For the second curve, the initial slope is close to 90 degree and the final slope is close to 0 degree. In both the cases, our slope varies. So, these two diagrams cannot be fit into this shear force diagram. On the other hand, for this inclined line, the slope at all the points is constant. So, we can say that this diagram could be fit into our shear force diagram. So, these two points can be joined like this. Now, we have to construct the bending moment diagram for the same. For this purpose, we need to calculate the value of bending moments at different points. As we all know, the bending moment is always zero at the end. So we can easily write that bending moment at A is equal to zero and bending moment at B is equal to zero. We also know that the bending moment is maximum at the point at which the shear force becomes zero. So we have to calculate the bending moment at point P, which can be calculated as 10 into 2. 10 for this support reaction into 2 the distance minus 5 
into 2 into 1 which turns out to be 10 kilonewton meter. So the bending moment at P is 10 kilonewton meter. We just need to draw the bending moment diagram. At point P, the value of bending moment is 10 kilonewton meter. Now, again comes the question, how do we join these three points? For this, again, we have to use our golden equation, which says that dm by dx is equal to v. This equation implies that the slope of the bending moment curve is equal to the shear force. Now, in the first case, the shear force decreases from 10 kN to 0. So, we have to fit a curve whose slope decreases. There are two possible curves. Either the curve can be like this or the curve can be like this. In the first case, the slope of the curve decreases from 90 to 0 degree while in the second case, the slope of the curve increases from 0 degree to 90 degree. As our shear force value decreases from 10 to 0, we need to fit a curve whose slope decreases from 90 to 0. So we can say that this curve would come. So we can join these two points like this. Again, for the next case, our shear force value increases from 0 to 10. Again, we have to use our golden equation which says that dm by dx is equal to v. There are two possible curves which can come. Either it can be like this or either it can be like this. In the first case, the slope increases from 0 to 90 degree. While in the second case, the slope decreases from 90 degree to 0 degree. As the value of shear force increases from 0 to 90, we can say that this curve would come. Our bending moment diagram can be joined like this. Let us consider one more example, which has an uniformly varying load, which increases from 0 to 2 kN per meter. Now, we have to construct the shear force and bending moment diagram for the same. For this, we have to calculate the support reactions which can be calculated by using the equations of equilibrium that are summation fy is equal to 0 and moment at any one of the points equal to 0. After calculating the support reactions, we have to calculate the shear force at different points. Again, we have to use our traditional method. The shear force at a point which is just to the left of A is equal to 0, while the shear force at a point which is just to the right of A is equal to 2 kN. Again, the shear force at a point which is just to the left of B is equal to 2 minus 6, which is equal to minus 4 kN. And the shear force at a point which is just to the right of B is equal to 0 kN. Again, we have to draw the shear force diagram for the same. Let us draw it. The shear force at A is equal to 2 kN. While the shear force at B is equal to minus 4 kN. Now, again comes the question, how do we join these two points? For this, we have to use our golden equation, which says that W is equal to dV by dx. Again, in this case, as the load in intensity W increases from 0 to 2 kN per meter, we have to fit a curve whose slope increases. We have two options, either we can join both the points like this or we can join both the points like this. In the first case, the slope of the curve decreases from 90 to 0 degree while in the second case, the slope of the curve increases from 0 degree to 90 degree. As the load intensity increases from 0 to 2 kN per meter, it can be seen that this curve fits in there. So, these two points can be joined like this. The point at which the shear force becomes zero is at a distance of L upon root 3 from point A which turns out to be 3.46 meter. This distance is fixed. Now we have to draw the bending moment diagram for the same. For this purpose we need to calculate the bending moments at different points. As we all know the bending moments at the end points is always equal to zero while the bending moment is maximum at the point at which the shear force becomes zero. There is a formula to calculate the maximum bending moment which is WL square upon 9 root 3. 
After substituting all the values, this value turns out to be 4.61 kN meter. So, we know that the bending moment at point P is nothing but plus 4.61 kN meter. Now, we just have to join all the three points. Again, here comes the question. How to join these three points? Again, we have to use our golden equation. Which says that dm by dx is equal to v. This, this means the slope of the bending moment curve is equal to the shear force. In the first case, the shear force value decreases from 2 to 0. So, we have to fit a curve whose slope decreases. We have got two options. Either the curve can be like this or the curve can be like this. In the first case, the slope of the curve decreases from 90 to 0, while in the second case, the slope of the curve increases from 0 to 90. As our shear force value decreases, we need to fit a curve whose slope decreases. So, this curve would come. So, these points can be drawn like this. Again, in the second case, the value of shear force increases from 0 to 4 kN. So, we have to fit a curve whose slope increases. There are two possibilities. Either the curve can be like this or it can be like this. In the first case, the slope of the curve increases from 0 to 90 degree while in the second case, the slope of the curve decreases from 90 degree to 0 degree. As the shear force value increases from 0 to 4, we can see that this curve would come. Hence, our bending moment diagram is completed. Hope all your doubts are cleared. However, if you have any doubt remaining, please let us know in the comment section below. Thank you.